Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. I hope you have been keeping well and safe and doing a lot of reading and film watching. I certainly have and today as part of my kind of splitting up of all my recent reads we're going to be talking specifically about some plays that I've been reading and also some wider discussion around plays and stage adaptations and the merit of reading plays and why I think we should all do it. So because I'm super cringy and love that sort of thing, I'm going to split this video up into three acts because, you know, I'm a sucker for the three act structure. So there you go. First, we're going to start by talking about one play, then another play, and then we'll just kind of sit around this non-literal campfire and have a discussion and as always I would love for you to continue this discussion in comments I always love hearing from you all. Act one. We'll start with a play sort of I guess it's actually a play that's meant to be read according to the author that I read earlier this month and I actually read this with my husband which was fun. I think that you should always rope in any willing and able volunteers to read plays with you because it just makes it so much more fun and so much more dynamic. But that is The Sunset Limited by Cormac McCarthy and I got this because I was kindly gifted it by Amy in our book exchange so if you haven't seen that I will link that here. We also have had a really great discussion over on my channel which a lot of you have probably seen because I think that brought in a lot of new people to my channel but that's about booktube and chronic illness. So shameless plug aside, The Sunset Limited by Cormac McCarthy. This is actually the play that got me thinking about all these wider questions surrounding reading plays and why it's important to read plays. And so I guess you could say that it's sort of the inspiration behind this video and making this video an independent thing rather than just lumping it into any kind of wrap up or recent reads video. The play entirely follows two male characters named Black and White who appear to be stuck in a room together and literally the entire text is their conversation and the kind of tumbling effect that their conversation has in the sense that each subject brings on a discussion of new subjects and it just turns into this wonderful philosophical think piece between these two characters. You might have heard about The Sunset Limited because it was turned into a film with Samuel L. Jackson and Tommy Lee Jones playing the two main and only characters in the text. We thank you for the life of the professor which you have returned to us. You're not making any sense. Oh! His eyes roll back in his head. You looking at some big black angel guy to snatch your hunky ass out of there at the last possible minute and save you from destruction? I never suggested any such thing. You're the one who put in the stuff about angels. I don't believe in angels. Well, what is it you believe in? I believe in the Sunset Limited. The characters are named white and black as an obvious reference to each of their skin colours but also probably ironically as the opposite to what each of their world views are. So this entire play is kind of a tension between two world views and figuring out which one is going to win out in the end. So Black is an optimist who has come from a life of crime and some pretty terrible things happening to him, all the way to just trying to live with as little as possible, doing God's will, being the best man he can be, and overall seeing the world in quite a positive light. And White is a suicidal man who is very nihilistic, seeing things very darkly, just in a in a really bad spot in life and not really understanding what the point of life is anymore or having the will to live. So that's a really interesting starting point to me and a kind of reminder that things don't necessarily need to be incredibly story driven to be interesting, just the juxtaposition of two very different worldviews and the kind of fight between those two things allows for a really wide discussion of so many different topics. So I really appreciated that reminder both as a writer and a reader that you don't necessarily have to have all these adventurous things going on. What do we talk about in this discussion? So many things 
Uh, we touch on race, we touch on class, we touch on power, we touch on humankind and how good or bad humankind is, the point of existence, which seems such a big topic, but it is one that comes up so often in conversation if you kind of lend your ear out for it in so many different forms and that is definitely true in this play. McCarthy also brings up the value of friendship and the question of whether or not letting someone into your life even if it's a stranger is valuable and is important and how scary that can be. We see questions of morality, we explore issues in academia, White is a tenured professor and has been for a long time and he has a lot of very cynical views about academia and Black is coming from a world where that has not been available to him and he has felt shut out of kind of questions of higher education and all those things. And this might seem like a lot to explore in what is a really, really short play which doesn't take long to read at all. But again, it kind of reminded me of the nature of those discussions in my life and in most everyone's lives, I think. It's really easy to let a discussion that started off really small, in this case just, do you want a glass of water and maybe you shouldn't leave this room because you don't know if you want to exist anymore so I'm just going to keep you here and keep talking at you in order for you to feel safe, which is the initial kind of issue in this play. And it's a discussion that has kind of snowballed out of control but in the most beautiful way possible and it sort of reminded me of that feeling whilst I was reading it of those discussions that you can have with your best friend where it, you started at 8 p.m. and now suddenly it's 2 a.m. and you feel like you've made three trips around the sun with all the things that you've discussed and those conversations are obviously especially interesting and important when they are between two people who share very different world views and I think it was really interesting for us to read it at a time where we did because obviously that question is sort of central to everything we're experiencing right now in the sense that both in the UK and the US, we are experiencing a time of great political division where it seems like things are split into two halves, I guess, especially in the UK. And it's impossible, seemingly, for those two halves to have a conversation because their, their worldviews differ too much. And actually, if this play teaches us anything whilst not being particularly relevant to what's going on in this current political climate, it's that it's very important to have those discussions and it's very important to kind of sail through those moments of discomfort and those moments of fear because the amount that you can learn from someone whose worldview you kind of by definition discounted is huge and I think that's where Cormac McCarthy gets this right and that's where this is particularly important and exciting for me to talk about at this time. Other than exploring a whole bunch of great themes and being quite relevant to read at this time, I think that this book is, as is so often the case I think with Cormac McCarthy, it's just very well written, it's very fun, it's, it's funny but also incredibly macabre and bleak and I think when you strike a balance between those two things you've done pretty well as an author. He plays a bit with words and language, not quite as well as in something like No Exit for example which I saw a university production of when I was at Durham and absolutely loved. I feel like maybe more stuff could have been done with language and words especially because both characters speak in very different ways registers and use very different language and that's kind of indicative or meant to be of who they are as people so I feel like there could have maybe have been a bit more play with that but ultimately I thought it was really fun to read especially if you can rope someone else into reading it with you so thank you very much to my ever loving husband who did that with me I think we had a really good time if you're interested I played white and he played black but yeah, I would, I would recommend it. It's probably not something I'd have picked up if Amy hadn't given it to me, so thank you very much, Amy. And I'm excited that I could, you know, kind of draw parallels to the way in which I debate and the way in which I discuss things. And in that way, I think it taught me a lot. Act 
to. The second play I read very recently was also courtesy of the lovely Amy. She gifted me another play because I said that I want to read more plays and that was called Beached by Melissa Bubnick and I think the theatre where she worked put on a production of this actually before she left there so that's how she got to know this play and it's a very interesting premise. So we follow morbidly obese Artie who's a teenage boy and he's living with his mother Jojo and he is one of if not the biggest person in at least the UK and probably one of the biggest people in the world. I think it says in the play that he's over five or six hundred pounds, I can't remember, but they are living in a house and kind of going on with their lives and they have all of their complex relationship and dysfunction and into their lives one day comes a documentary crew who want to follow Artie on his quest for weight loss and generally to follow what life is like for him as a morbidly obese person and I use that not as a choice but more because that's how it's described in the play. So this play explores a lot of things and obviously on the surface it's a play about how we view morbidly obese people and therefore as a consequence of that how we view people who are not able to participate in life in the same way that able-bodied people are and in that sense it's very interesting. It's also a play about voyeurism and about the complexities of that, how our TV and our entertainment has become very voyeuristic over time. We all know that there are shows, Channel 4, Cough, where basically the intent is to look at weird people and thank ourselves that we are not weird in whatever way is being showcased that night at 8pm. And it's also a play about the public versus the private it's a play about how we treat people in general and so in that sense it explores a lot of really interesting themes and does so pretty well in my opinion. It is pretty succinct, pretty short, really easy to read and even just reading it really gave me a clear idea of if I was putting on the production how I would put it on and the characters I felt really jump off the page. I would probably say that my only concern, and we'll talk about this more, but I think this might be because I hadn't seen it on stage. I felt like some of the laughs, because it is funny, it is incredibly sad also. I don't know how you couldn't find the idea of someone being exploited essentially by a documentary crew sad, but it is pretty funny in parts, and I was never really sure whether my own laughter was supposed to be laughing with Artie, our main character, or laughing at him. And that was a bit uncomfortable for me because obviously a lot of the problem with these kind of exploitative documentaries and TV shows and other media is that you do end up with people who laugh at the strange person as opposed to with them or the audience member does not bother to imagine them complexly in whatever way that means. So uh, I was a little bit concerned about that and I think it would depend on the production but I could imagine that sometimes it could turn a little bit of slapstick and that concerned me slightly because I think it's a waste because it is exploring a lot of important things. One of the things I appreciated was how modern it was. Obviously this whole question of documentary crews coming in and films being made about real people and especially about people who are considered in any way freakish for want of a much better word or come out of the norm in some way is a pretty modern phenomenon and so I think that is pretty exciting that that's making its way onto the stage in some kind of way. 
There were parts of the stage direction which seemed to imply that any stage production of it would end up being quite meta, because obviously it's a stage production of something that ends up being a documentary. So I'm sure that if you were putting that on, you could have a lot of fun with that. And it, I, it was quite easy to imagine in my head what that would look like, at least if I were in charge. And so that was interesting to me. Obviously anything to do with bodily difference and how that causes other people to treat their fellow human is interesting to me. So I was quite worried about what the portrayal was gonna be of that. And as I said, some parts were a little more concerning than others for me. But I think just bringing that to the forefront and bringing the kind of obsession with voyeurism and obsession with reminding ourselves how good our lives are relative to whoever we're talking about was quite an interesting thing to bring up for me. So enjoyed reading that, read it in an hour or two, and probably would recommend. Act three. So like I said at the beginning, I thought we would use the fact that I've read a couple of plays recently as an excuse to kind of have a discussion about plays. And I'm gonna let you in on a secret. If you saw my video, which was actually my second video ever about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, I was actually going to make that that video. I was going to use the fact that I had seen Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and the kind of reception that it was getting to open up a wider discussion about the value in reading plays and how reading a play is different to seeing a play and the different things that you can get out of both. But I sat down in front of the camera three times to try and film that video and it was going really badly. And I thought that was because I was a newbie and had literally only filmed one video in my life. But apparently it's not because that sometimes still happens to me and I get really tangled and uh, forget what I was gonna say and I don't feel like I sound intelligent and I've been kind of having that crisis recently in videos. But anyway, so I didn't make that video and I made my love letter to Harry instead. And so now, however many months later, we're gonna try and have that discussion. I think plays are one of my favorite things in the world. Let's preface with that. And one of the great things in my life is that I have had the opportunity to see many plays. I've had the opportunity to act in some. And I am so aware of what a great privilege that is. And so I just wanna start by saying that. But I also think it is really important to read plays and can be a really valuable thing. So I'm kind of gonna try and make that case here. I would start by saying that one of the coolest things about reading a play is that it kind of forces us and therefore trains us to use our imagination in a completely different way than reading a novel does. So you could say that we've kind of got used to reading novels. Reading novels is, generally easy-ish for most of us in the sense that if things are well written they're usually quite descriptive without being too flowery we kind of have a good idea of what the scene is and I don't know our brains are used to kind of filling in the gaps and we all imagine things differently but we kind of know how it's going to go when we open a novel and uh, that's really amazing and it's kind of like for a lot of us, I think reading is kind of like going home and not only reading familiar stuff, but just our brains know how to do it. Most of us read many fewer plays in our lifetime. And so the idea of reading a play can be kind of daunting and weird. And we figure that there's only one real way to imagine things. And if we haven't seen the play, how are we supposed to know what that real way is? But actually, I find plays really exciting for just the opposite reason, because it's kind of like brain gym, I guess. It, it just kind of pulls my brain in, in slightly different directions. In some ways, it's much more descriptive because we have things like stage directions, which by the way, we can choose to follow or not follow, even in our heads, because what if our brains were the stage, by the way? Just let's imagine that for a second. And then, in another sense, it's much less descriptive because the author, probably most of the time, is trying to leave the text of his or her play open to many different interpretations. And so in a way, it's much less flowery than a novel and much less 
dense with text and that allows us to kind of just go walking in our brains and uh, explore lots of different things and imagine how we would do things and yeah in that sense I just find it really different and it's really fun to kind of go on that journey to train your brain to think a bit differently about that stuff. So feeding into that idea about being able to use your imagination differently, one of the greatest things in my opinion about plays, like I briefly mentioned, is that they are open to literally thousands of interpretations. Now, so is a novel, but kind of in a more static way. So once you have read a novel or a collection of novels, you have that set of characters in your brain, the way that you imagine them, and they're kind of stuck there. And that's why the conversations oh that's not how I imagined her or is that how you imagined her I didn't I imagined her this way exists a lot with books but one of the cool things about plays is that because they can be put on over and over and over again I like to think of them as living things living things that breathe that evolve that change maybe every single night with the same company and by definition it's not going to be the same company forever or the same director or the same theatre and so the idea of physical space playing a role even and that is a thing for me that is very singular to plays and that is true even if you don't see them in the flesh. You just know that they are going to exist that way so differently in so many people's minds and I think that's a great thing. So what do we open the door for then? We open the door for gender bending, we open the door for race bending. Cough, Hermione Granger, cough. I will always defend plays for their living breathingness and that's not to say that I don't think novels live and breathe I, I think they do but there is something different about plays and you can sort of get that rush and get that part of your imagination going when you do read them even if you don't get to see them in real life. A more minor thing that I love about plays is how easy they are to read and how quickly you can consume a play. And sometimes I find, for example, that they're really good for getting me out of reading ruts just because a novel might feel overwhelming or I don't have enough time to really immerse myself in a novel. So I will open a play and it will take me a couple of hours to read and I will have completely opened a new world for myself and I'm always on the hunt for little tidbits of goodness that I can consume from a media perspective and for me plays really do that. Also obviously if you have a theatre background or an acting background plays are even more exciting to read because you can imagine how you would interpret certain things within the text and you can imagine how you would direct it and you can let things change with time and with growth and with understanding of the characters. And lastly, I think one of the great things about plays is how timeless they are. Because they're open to thousands of different interpretations, and I'm reading Hagseed by Margaret Atwood, which is based on The Tempest and about this very thing about how plays can always be interpreted in different ways. They are, in and of themselves, timeless with the same text and the same themes and the same stories. You can modernise plays, you can put them in completely different times, you can make them relevant to current political situations, you can make them relevant to current life situations, you can completely change the intent of a play while sticking to the original source material. Some people might have problems with that and some people might find it more difficult to acclimatise to but it is available to you and I think there's really no other medium that makes that so possible as a play does. And now curtain call. By the way I think you'd like to know that I have a stuffed hippo sitting in front of the camera because I was in a really bad mood before I started filming this video and I'm trying to cheer myself up but you guys and Mr Hippo have cheered me up and I love talking about how awesome plays are so I hope that you enjoyed my kind of weird 
crazy discussion about how reading a play is a really important thing. If you have any plays to recommend to me down in the comments, please do. And tell me if you like reading plays, if you think it's exciting and any plays you might have read recently. I really want to hear from you. Even if you're an actor or actress or you've directed a play before, one of my favourite things I've ever done was to co-direct Oliana by David Mamet with my friend Clem in Durham and it was so fun and I loved it and I will always love that play above all other plays because I was able to bring my vision to the text that he'd written. By the way, if you've not read any Mamet, I highly recommend. And with that, I am going to love you and leave you and I will be back very soon with I think some more recent reads. We'll see what order things go in. In the meantime, please be safe, please keep well and please keep reading. Bye!